Or, or me and record? Yeah, my me and record. <laughs> okay. All right. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm honored to... <laughs> I don't know if you <laughs> say you are shy. <laughs> <laughs> Today, I'm honored to have Osei Kwame yeah. to be on this platform. It's, it's a conversation thing, as you always know. So, please introduce yourself. Yeah, my name is Osei Kwame, and I am a documentary filmmaker, voiceover artist, yeah, and a filmmaker based in Accra, Ghana. And I also have a channel. It's called Me, You, Us. I do videos with my wife, and okay. yeah, we sit and we talk. That's also, I don't say Kwame. Yeah, I changed it changed to become it. a couple's channel. Oh, that's nice. So it's me plus you is us. Wow. That's our channel. All right. You might have to you would have, know that you might have, you would have to subscribe to that channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And get to he has amazing sessions with his wife. We're just gonna have a conversation as husbands and uh, men. Hey, let me clarify. <laughs> I mean, uh, no, no, like, <laughs> no, like that kind of husband. <laughs> no, like that kind of husband. Yeah. He has a wife. I have a wife. Women, women. A female, female. Uh, yeah. But this conversation basically is on before I got married. So before I got married, okay. Yeah, before you got married, we want to just talk about how it was for you. You are married. I'm married. Yeah. How long has it been? Two years. Two years. I got married in uh, January 2020. Okay. Yeah. Two years. Before you got married. Yeah. Uh, how did you see? How did you see the whole marriage thing for you? Okay. So, funny enough, I've always been the kind of person who has always been a lover. It's cliche. I've been a lover of love. Okay. Yeah. I've always been a lover of love. I've always been a a partnership person. I've always been uh, wanting to have someone of my own kind of person. Okay. So it's it's hadn't been such a should I say alien concept to me to want to be with somebody or to want to get married. No. Okay. So, but my knowledge of marriage and love, I would say um, the influences were all around me. Um, I was going to ask that if yeah. you were a lover of love, the influences are all around me. I would uh, mostly, I mean, pop culture, TV, mm. radio, mm. like people around you, yeah. your parents, all those things. Yes, yeah. yeah, so the influences have always been around me. Yeah. So I've always been the kind of person who has always wanted to have that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you grew up with your father, your mother. Yeah. Also, and my siblings all in one house. Yeah. So I'm sure you saw all of that yeah. that happening. Yeah. Okay. Who taught you about marriage? Did you learn that from your father or something? No, nobody 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 talks to you about marriage. And it's a strange thing that for most people their first encounter with marriage and what it will mean for them living with somebody else, depending on the religion they are in yeah. will be during counseling mm. so for most people they know about relationships they know about even like you know boyfriend girlfriend like living with somebody or whatever it is but nobody actually really prepares anybody for marriage uh, except when you get to that yeah. i've decided i want to marry this person and based on the church we go we are doing counseling yeah. but i don't do church okay why because i don't believe in uh, religion yeah, so I don't do church. I don't go to church. Yeah. That's just me. Yeah. My belief is uh, that humans are humans, as in we shouldn't have a divide. Yeah. I shouldn't belong to a group to belong to or to be respected as a human. I shouldn't be seen as a Christian before you are kind to me. Yeah. Or I shouldn't be seen as a Muslim before you yeah. give me something. I just feel like love and respect everybody as they should be. Now, the thing is, I'm not somebody who's going to say, oh, I'm an atheist, I don't believe there's a God. But I believe that if there's a God, that God is not a God of Christians, it's not a God of Muslims, it's not a God of Buddhists, it's a God of man, human. And ultimately, for what I knew growing up, in a church it's a god of love that is the one thing that god yeah. is yeah. 
Yeah. And what better way to love than to not have any segregation, no yeah. groups, nothing. Yeah. Your perspective about man and all of that, from my findings, even as a Christian, yeah, like that is actually the perspective that we all are supposed to have. Yeah. That's actually the right perspective to life. I yeah, mean. yeah. But I wanted to ask that: Were you not afraid you wanted to get married? Was I not afraid not yeah. wanting to get married? No, actually, no. You are not. Not afraid at all. But why? Why would I be afraid? That's the question. Well, because I feel like a lot of people. <laughs> Even for me, when I was going to get married, I was just afraid, but uh, the feeling of unknown of how it was going to end up was... What do you mean how it was going to end up? Like, how it's going to go. I like, I'm not married, I've not done it before, but it's like, in my mind, I'm trying to picture it, how it's going to go, how will it, how will it be? So, but did, did, did you have, this is, now I'm turning it against you, did you have any, uh, did you live with your wife before? Uh, no, we didn't even, like really, really live together. together. But she spends weekends sometimes. Those are yeah. those. Are so yeah, and and how long did you date before you got married? Oh, just a year. Just a year. Yeah, yeah. I I, I can understand where maybe the fear of the unknown will come from, and even the people who have lived together for twenty years. So that the thing that there's both fear and comfort in both ways. Okay. So even people who have lived together for thirty years can divorce. Yes. People true. can also meet today and marry tomorrow and live together for 90 years. That's true. So there's really no formula f with marriage or being with somebody mm -hmm. for you to worry your head about how yours would rather go or not. Yeah. I think that will rather make you concentrate so much on the possibility of mm -hmm. something going wrong yeah. than rather having an appreciation and you know gratitude for the thing that you have. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, so yeah. I wasn't necessarily um, afraid to get married. And for me, um, the reason why I also believe in um, cohabitation mm. and living together. I mean, yes, people do say that, yeah, people can hide their attitude mm -hmm. till you marry them and then they show you they who show they really you, are. Yeah, yeah. But that's just life. If the person is hiding their attitude, they show you who they really are. If they show you, Charlie, take your lesson and go. Absolutely. But if somebody is true, if your relationship is all joy and jolly, no arguments, nothing, I just feel like there's something wrong. There's a, there's a lot of pretense in that. Yeah, there's something wrong. You can't have happy days all exactly. the time. Exactly. And if the person is not showing you their vulnerable parts, when they are sad, when they can't confide in you, mm. when they are angry and all those things. And I experienced all those elements when we were like you know long distance dating and okay. living okay. together okay. and all those things so i experienced who she was okay i knew what i was getting into okay. so you believe that if you are with this lady uh, living together is, is a good thing to do yeah for me i think living together is a good thing before you even get married before you get married i think it's a good thing but then again it also depends on who you're going to be living together with That's if if outside you're living together in your interactions there's not a lot of um, openness mm. the person is not themselves they're not free your girlfriend has never really gotten angry angry and spoken her mind out to you before mm. chances are they're holding a lot of things back mm. that will will not change marriage won't change it yeah yeah so i saw my wife for who she was before and we got married together because yeah. we live together it's not because we live together even before that okay so during the dating okay. we talk we we argue we have our fights and we talk through our like you know differences yeah so i knew from the beginning that oh this is somebody who uh wants to work mm. because the ugly didn't the ugly part i want to say the ugly the ugly part of the relationship didn't deter her from thinking ah this is too difficult for me i don't want to do it again when you say work uh, what do you mean? So working for the relationship is when people have this uh, idea in their mind that when you find a person you love, like I was saying, it's all rosy and heaven throughout. No, if you go into a relationship like that with that expectation, mm. that is when people after the honeymoon phase, what we call the honeymoon phase, where you are all over each other and all those <laughs> things, there's yeah, your yeah. dates, your queer, love you, love you. <laughs> when that thing fades. Yeah because they were they were so expectant that it would last longer and you're holding on to it 
then they start getting angry at the little things mm. because now it feels normal but marriage is supposed to feel normal i'm supposed to feel like my normal self around the person okay. it's not uh infatuation or crash yeah the whole time exactly that is when you know that yeah you are working when you wake up every day you choose this person consciously over time yes you choose this person consciously you know that this is the person i want to be with why the person has seen me in my lowest my weakest my most vulnerable all my you know uh yeah weak weaknesses and all those things and still chose me still loves me because it was enough for the person you've also seen the person in their lowest they've they've cried they've been angry they've been old, and you still see that no it's, it doesn't overpower yeah. the goodness that you get yeah. with this person yeah you know from from what you're saying I, I get some some deep thoughts from what you're saying for example so being honest in your relationship being faithful in in your process like being open let me use the word yeah open from the, the beginning from the beginning like, from the beginning it's like key to having from the beginning good, yeah yeah from the beginning that's why people often advise that be friends first mm. you I, feel, know? I feel like a lot of men don't do that or maybe they choose to not want to do that yeah I, whichever I, way they, yeah they, but it's not it's not men don't do that it's most of mostly people's uh knowledge of relationship like i was saying only comes with the nice parts they're often not uh, inclined to accepting that there will be terrible times too and that's okay yeah. as in it should it yeah. should happen for you to work through and become stronger yeah. so that you know that oh okay these are some of the things that annoy this person you know and when you speak about it you realize that ah oh there was some misunderstanding or miscommunication so it wasn't even a big deal yeah and the issue is when you are not able to speak about it that's when you i use this analogy oh it's okay media i'm not angry i'm not like i i, I choose to forget it mm. don't do that okay i choose to forget it okay. no the forget the process of forgiveness for me comes with uh, a change of attitude mm. and a change of attitude can only be broken down through conversation see if somebody has done something to you and you think that oh media it's okay me I, i've said it ah he's not stopping so i've stopped but i think even that perspective is not even good to say i've said it so yeah I i've said it and he's not stopping so i've stopped <laughs> yeah you swept it under the rug exactly it'll next thing back. you see you're on bola <laughs> and you'll start thinking yeah when your bola starts smelling bad that's when you start thinking that you know what i don't want to be in this room this bola room or this bola relationship definitely then you want to go definitely but when it happens and you realize that oh this has happened you tell the person that this is how this made me feel mm. and i know that you may not have meant it that way but it still made me feel this way and i just wanted you to know okay. and the person also accepts that okay i didn't intend to do that yeah. and i will work on, on making sure that okay this doesn't happen again then you you find way to ways to like you know build a culture of speaking yeah. about things about yeah things. you know one of the things for me that i always am proud of my wife for is that from the very day we started talking that she said she said yes to me one of the things she told me was i am ready and willing to learn and to grow that's it yeah so the so, open-mindedness so, to learn so and to grow like every time for her it's a lesson everything yeah. we are going through is a lesson yeah. yeah and lessons can only happen when you have conversations absolutely so absolutely. what went wrong why who did what and exactly. why did it happen that way exactly oh okay so this was the element that was mistaken ah i understand now why did it make you feel that way oh so there's a trigger here there's a trigger there ah okay then i know now that okay when something like this is happening and i see that it's similar to what has happened before i just let you know that oh i see that this is a pattern that yeah we have experienced before yeah. so can we talk about it yeah 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 you are married to a white woman i'm married to a european woman i don't like using the term married to a white woman because i often say that she's a person first absolutely you get it i like that she's a person first i like that um although i mean yes technically the world would say that yeah but she's white so why you see that when you say she's white no but she's a person first yeah imagine you having a like you know uh, a conversation no you walking into your european wife having a conversation with her friend 
and she's like, ah, it's your black husband there, or it's your. <laughs> I get that. Your, when you yeah. enter, you'll be like, ah. I get that. It's very I'm, 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 like, I'm, yeah, I'm first, I'm Kwame. <laughs> Take away the black or Ghanaian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Kwame first. Exactly, exactly. I get that. So why do you always want to qualify who the person I get is that. with? You're married to a white woman. I no, I'm married I to that. a European person. I get that. She's called how, Elaine. How has that been? Like, how has that been? Um, did, you, did you grow up like here in Ghana? Me? Yeah. Yes. Like really, like full full time. <laughs> Why are you asking me like that? <laughs> Born and bred in Ghana. Wow. Why? What, what, what makes it uh, weird? One of the reasons I ask this is yeah. because as part of what I've learned in, in Ghana, Yeah. Uh, a lot of men growing up don't really know a lot of these things from like your perspectives are like they are, they are you know when you press an attack you see that this is really pressed yeah your, your, your perspective and uh, thoughts, like the way you, you always, articulate your words yeah. like it feels like you really know what you're about it's a well pressed you know thought. <laughs> yeah like but i, like I think what's your idea what, like yeah what you may be you know that yeah, kind of thing yeah uh -huh. but and, i think um it's just been like you it, when we we're having a previous conversation yeah which they'll watch the video hopefully you've had your feelings in your heart and your mind yeah. and you are stubborn when yeah. you have a feeling and you want to go for something yeah. you go for you it go for it yeah and you stick with it yeah. and then your perspectives are ingrained like you you are you are you, you believe your mm. belief is strong mm. yeah so I, i'll say that that's about the same thing i've always wanted to be the kind of guy who you know had things a certain way and i was i i never thought that my dreams or perspectives were weird because when i thought about the world view i realized that ah it's normal for people to want to be on time so why is it that when me i'm a Ghanaian who shows yeah, up <laughs> at 12 people have problem with and i'm angry that you you showed up at 12 5 you think that ah you they are behaving like a white man what do you mean by i'm behaving like a white man exactly. like it doesn't make sense exactly did we say we want to meet at 12 yes, yes. so why are you not here at 12. absolutely i get that you get it so i was yeah i've i've, I've always had that um people often ask me that question why why are you so off it's not off it's just principle so you th you s believe that if a man yeah ha gets to have the right perspective about life about the relationship about woman and even himself yeah you believe that like he will have a good anybody life. should be able to that's the thing yeah. it's it's not it's not it's not a, a, an alien philosophy yeah. anybody should be able to have a good relationship with anybody else that's why when in the beginning when you asked me like you know when i was talking about the first time people hear about what marriage truly is is when they go for counseling and I was like, well, I didn't have counseling, but I'm not having marital problems, right? But I'm not saying that people who want to get counseling are having marital problems, whatever. Yeah. But then I'm just saying that it's not the only reason why a marriage will survive or fail. But that counseling or that counseling, if it will fail, it will fail. It will fail. <laughs> if it succeeds, it so will it's fail. more about the people in a relationship. Mm, yeah. So we sometimes concentrate too much on the, the skirmishes around the thing mm. and the idea. People are in love with the idea of love not like they don't love love they like the idea of love and most people's idea of love is like i was saying heaven is paradise is <laughs> nice i know show them something else and then they are thrown I off know. so you know i was born and bred here my guy wow. like the first time i even ever went outside ghana was 2017. oh really yeah like that's recently 2017. i, I mean the reason I'm, I'm i asked that earlier i'm wondering how you met Oh, so <laughs> Elaine came to do her master's program in like Accra. Okay. Yeah. So she had a, a thesis to write. She was writing a thesis on the effect of uh, radio talk shows in influencing policy. Yeah. How, you know, radio shows influence policy. And she ended up at City. I am not a political show host, or I wasn't a political show host at the time. But she came to city that's how we met okay yeah okay. that's how we met and then we started talking she left when she was done with her uh, first thesis yeah. and then she had to come back again for her second thesis and she almost went to burundi but at the time burundi there was some uh scuffle there okay. like you know those okay. yeah they were having some issues so she came back to ghana 
So Chance brought her back, and that's when we started dating. So we met, she left, she came back, we started dating. Yeah. How would you say now that you are married from your home experience, being with your wife for two years, how, how, how would you say you are taking marriage to in the more years to come? That is why I was saying that I think we may be having it the way we have it. One, because of the kind of people that we are. So the basis, in my opinion, the basis for any working relationship is open-mindedness and tolerance. Okay. Open-mindedness and tolerance. That you know that you are an individual, the person is an individual. Your viewpoints are never going to be the same. Mm. But if you are open-minded enough to understand why people think a certain way, mm. and they also understand why you think a certain way, that is the first basis for reconciling whatever differences you may have. The first one is open-mindedness yeah. and tolerance. And I think the second one, which I think is the most important, is communication. Yeah. So communication is how do you go about it? You are angry, but are you shouting? <laughs> are you calm about the anger and still telling the person that this really, really annoyed me and I just wanted you to know? Or you are throwing things around. Yeah. So communication is always about the how and the tone, not necessarily the message. Yeah. Anybody can do a message, but how is the message delivered? Mm. So when you were angry and you wanted to say that I'm really angry, right? Or this really hurt me, right? One person can say, this really hurt me and throw things around. And another person can say, this really hurt me. Yeah. Both are hurts, but two Different. reactions. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So open-mindedness, tolerance, and then communication. You are two different people. You can never be the same, but you can learn to exist together. Wow. Yeah, that's what I believe. That's lovely. You are actually the first I'm filming this with. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. So yeah, idea. so that's 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 basically, um, and I'm not going to sit here and and let you feel like oh, he knows exactly what he's about. No, not at all. I've had to learn with this particular person. So I've known her for seven years. Okay. And every day is a learning pro process. Every single day. Mm -hmm. So even though some of the things have now become easier because we've been doing it for a while, we still have like this, like even couples who have been married for 50 years still argue still and sometimes yeah. then wonder like, ah, why is this still here? You definitely. know? Yeah. yeah. So definitely. don't ever think that you, you have like gotten rid of it or you've settled, you are fine, no. So it's still a learning it's process. It's an ending cycle. Right? Yeah, it's a learning on learning, learning on learning, you know, and also remembering that even when you've learned something today, seven years from now, personalities actually do change. The things that were meaningful to them that time are no longer meaningful to them. So how do you adjust? How do you adapt? Yeah. So it's, it's not, it's not, it's nice. It's beautiful. Companionship, having somebody to call your own, it's lovely, but it's also hard work. It's uncomfortable. It's a lot of work, man. Yeah, <laughs> when you think it's, about un it. it's uncomfortable. Yeah. It's hurtful, it's painful, it's vulnerabilities, all those things. So when people tend to feel that that aspect is not attractive enough for them, that is when you, you lose it. That is when you don't have the grit to stay. Now, staying here doesn't mean that, oh, when somebody's abusing you because you, you want to be resilient, stay in the abusive relationship. No, that's not what I mean. Staying here is when both of you have differences that are talked about amicably and realize that, okay, at a certain point, if the differences are so, like, you know, deal breakering that i don't know i don't know how to ask the like okay we both understand that no this thing means so much to me and you you can't do it and yours also means so much to you and i can't do it then okay you leave it you go your separate ways if you yeah. can yeah yeah but if it's workable yeah work it yeah, yeah. but workable here like i was saying it's not Take, <laughs> yeah, and don't take abuse. Yeah, yeah. Don't under any circumstance. Don't take abuse, yes. and think that you will change or she will change. No. Yeah. So, thank you so much. 
Thank you. It's, it's, I was going to ask for last words, but you've actually said the last words already. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 work, man. It's work. Yeah. It's work. And yeah. Wow. Okay. You are married to people. Yes. And the people first people before first. any other thing. Yes, it's a person. Yeah. Person first. Yeah. So thank you so much yeah. for tuning in to this and um, thank you for watching.